I will tell you, Willie, um, when Fonnie Willis stood up, came into the room and said, I'm here, I'm going to take the stand, I thought, oh boy, everybody, <laughs> everybody sit back. This is going to be something. She was defiant. She was upset. She was angry. Um, and m many would say she was asked a lot of degrading questions. And the entire thing was a bit of... Um, uh, you know what show uh, that she doesn't have time for, but uh, she she gave it to him. I'll tell you that. Yeah, it was an incredibly dramatic scene. As she said, she testified later, she'd been pacing back and forth in her office listening to the previous testimony. And she went in and remember, she was not supposed to appear. She wasn't going to appear right. for the subpoena. And she said, I'm ready. I want to do it. And just went mm -hmm. and sat down in the witness oh. stand. And it will continue this morning. She's not done yet. So Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis took the stand in Atlanta and delivered testimony in the evidentiary hearing regarding the misconduct allegations against her. This is an effort by Donald Trump and several of his co-defendants to have Willis disqualified and the election interference case dismissed. D.A. Willis, who initially tried to quash the subpoena for her testimony, withdrew that objection yesterday and accused the defense of lying about her relationship with Special Prosecutor Nathan Wade. Mr. Wade visits you at the place you laid your head. When? Has he ever visited you at the place you laid your head? So let's be clear, because you've lied in this, this. Let me tell you which one you lied in, right here. I think you lied right here. No, 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 no. This is the truth, Judge. And this it, is, it, it is a lie. It is a lie. D.A. Willis holding up three pleadings filed um, by the defense there. Last month, Trump co-defendant Michael Roman, a longtime Republican opposition researcher who worked in the Trump administration, accused Willis and Wade of having an improper personal relationship and claimed Wade was hired for the job because of it. Willis did admit to the relationships, but she said it started after Wade was hired. Trump and several other co-defendants joined Roman's motion to try to remove Willis. When Roman's attorney, Ashley Merchant, accused Willis of not wanting to turn over records, Willis reminded her that she is not the one charged with a crime. I object to you getting records. You've been intrusive into people's personal lives. You're confused. You think I'm on trial. These people are on trial for trying to steal an election in 2020. I'm not on trial, no matter how hard you try to put me on trial. Earlier, Mr. Wade took the stand and testified to the timeline of his relationship with Willis and how the pair split the costs of trips and their dates with Willis, he said, paying in cash. She confirmed that later. Before that, a former friend of D.A. Willis, who also worked inside the D.A.'s office, her name's Robin Yerty, testified that Willis and Wade began dating in 2019 disputing the timeline the couple had given. When pressed, it was revealed that Yurti had a falling out with Willis after she was forced out of the DA's office in 2022. Mm -hmm. Okay, with all of that said, let's bring in former <laughs> U.S. attorney and MSNBC legal analyst Joyce Vance, former assistant U.S. attorney for the District of Columbia, Glenn Kirshner. He's an MSNBC legal analyst and former litigator and MSNBC legal correspondent, Lisa Rubin. Okay, let's begin left to right. How about that? We've got so many great legal minds here. Joyce, I'll start with you. Uh, the conventional wisdom seemed to be after Mr. Wade's testimony. Some said that this case was dead because of inconsistencies in the way that they were describing the relationship because of the previous testimony of Ms. Yurti saying, no, actually, they were dating a long time before this. So, yes, maybe this was an improper relationship. Did D.A. Willis's testimony after Mr. Wade's do anything to change your mind about that? So, you know, it may have changed the public impression of the hearing, but from the get-go, this was about whether the defendant could prove a conflict of interest uh, existed under Georgia law that warranted disqualification for Fonnie Willis. And at least based on what we heard yesterday, maybe they'll have more today, but they came up short. They came up short in Wade's testimony, the, the witness, the friend who took the stand, was impeached. And, and this is the sort of thing that when you're presenting evidence, you don't want to have happen. But it turns out that this witness resigned in lieu of being fired from the district attorney's office. That threw her testimony about the, the timeline of the relationship into doubt. 
ultimately, at the end of the day yesterday, it was just a big nothing burger, Willie. There was nothing that showed that Fonnie Willis and Nathan Wade had the sort of financial conflict of interest that Georgia law recognizes, something akin to a prosecutor who only gets paid if they win a case. That's the classic case at Georgia law where there's a conflict that results in disqualification. That just wasn't there yesterday in the courtroom. So, Glenn, Joyce is right. We got deep, deep in the weeds about how much cash did you pay for this dinner a couple of years ago? And D.A. Willis was saying, I, I don't remember. I don't keep receipts. She said she keeps large amounts of cash at homes and often pays uh, her way in cash, splitting the bill with Mr. Wade in these dates. So you kind of got mired in all these details. But to pull way back, what did you see yesterday? What were the stakes? And did you see anything that would get rid of this case that would push it down to someone else who may not take it up. You know, Willie, as is always the case, I agree with Joyce. Um, this is going nowhere. It will very soon be yesterday's news because there is no conflict, financial or otherwise. <laughs> There's nothing that I saw in the testimony thus far recognizing additional witnesses will testify today and the hearing is expected to go into next week. Uh, but I've seen nothing that has inured to the detriment of any defendant in the case. So I don't think the defense will be able to carry the burden. What I, what I do think is what we saw yesterday is a tribute to the value of cameras in the courtroom. Because mm -hmm. as you watch D.A. Willis testify, um, I would be hard pressed to, to believe that anything she said was a misrepresentation, was inaccurate or was untruthful. She was angry and she had every right to be angry. She was holding up public court filings that she contended um, contained all sorts of lies. And once they go out into the public square, people are going to believe those lies. She was hot, but she had every right to be hot. She remained respectful, but forceful. And I don't think this hearing will win the defense any relief whatsoever.